Hey guys, what is up? This is Tamer from ITT, iTalk Tech, giving you all your latest news, reviews, and how-tos for everything tech. Today guys, we're going to do another episode of Tech Talks, and this, in this video we're going to be talking about whether to buy a Mac or a PC, Windows OS, Mac OS. Alright, so I've been getting a couple messages and emails lately asking me which kind of computer do you prefer? I'm looking to buy a new computer. Which computer do you want? Which computer should I buy, a Mac or a PC, or a tablet even? So I'm going to try to help you narrow down those um, different types of computers. Now let's just start with um, computers itself. You have a couple categories of computers. You have tablets, you have um, desktop computers, and you have laptops. Now a tablet is great for anyone that wants to do minimalistic processing power, so just surfing the internet, watching um, videos on YouTube and stuff like that, and just basic apps and stuff like that. You, know, you're, you can have like a notepad that you can do documents on, but you won't be able to have programs like Microsoft Office or or heavy processing powers like for um like video editors or photo editors but if you're one of those people that like only surf the web a couple times a day and stuff like that and you just um watch videos and stuff like that and listen to music a tablet is perfect for you if you guys are looking for a little bit more processes hungry or then you want to get um a desktop or a laptop those have much more those are much more um Processes are hungry and they're um, much faster and they usually take um, more hard tasks like photo editing and video editing and other um, programs that you'd use, software and programs. Now, now since we um, took out um, tablets, now we're going to focus on desktops and laptops. Now for a desktop, a desktop is not mobile. You, you're not going to be taking your desktop to your car or to um, to the Starbucks just to use it. All right, It's not portable. It's going to stay in one place and that's going to be where it is until you move to a different area and then it's going to stay in that place. You're not going to be moving it all around and going on vacation with it or something like that. A laptop is a different scenario. You get processing power with portability. You can take a laptop almost anywhere. You can take it to Starbucks. You can take it to um, with you in the car, with you to your work. It all depends on how you like your portability. You're going to have to depend on um, what you're going to use the computer for. If it's going to stay in an office and that's it, then you want to get a desktop. Or do, do you want to have a portable but also to become a kind of a desktop in a way? Then you might want to think about getting a laptop and a monitor, an external monitor. This way you can have a bigger screen, like a 27-inch screen, connected to a laptop, and you still get like a desktop quality for it. So now that we narrowed down whether you should get a desktop or um, laptop based on portability of your needs, we're going to talk a little bit about um, actual like, um, OS's. So we have two OS's, Windows OS and Mac OS. Now there is um, Linux, but you're not going to buy a computer that's already pre-installed with Linux. You might want to install that by yourself. But we're going to narrow down. We're going to um, take out Linux for right now and just focus on the two major operating systems, Windows OS and Mac OS. All right, guys. So with um, operating systems comes different terminology. So I thought we should just get terminology set down straight so you just don't get confused when you're um, computer shopping. All right. So a PC is a computer that runs on Windows OS. So my, uh, Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows 8, Windows 8.1. Those are all PCs. A Mac is not a PC. A Mac can run Windows if you know how to use Boot Camp or use Parallels desktop software. A PC is anything, is any computer that runs Windows. Now, an Ultrabook is a type of computer that is ultra thin. So, an Ultrabook is extremely thin. They have SSDs in them to make them thin. But these also are PCs, so these run Windows. So, a MacBook Air which is really thin but runs Mac OS is still not a, an Ultrabook. It is not a PC, it's not an Ultrabook, it's a Mac. A Mac is anything that runs Mac OS, OS 10 in specific. So a Mac, um, for example, MacBook Air runs um, any, anything from like a Mac OS 10 Mountain Lion or Mac OS 10 Mavericks or Mac OS 10 Snow Leopard if you're gonna go that old. But a Mac runs Mac OS and that's fine. <laughs> So, going down into specifications right now, we're going to leave um, software at the end, such as OS and the OS features in it. So, going down to um, specifications, we have processor and compu processors and computers, we have RAM and compu um, computers, we have um, hard drives, and we have display screens. Display screens are important, but they're not usually the most deciding factor. There are really nice screens outside out right now for computer. We have 1080p screens right now. We have beautiful, gorgeous ones that are over 1080p. We have Retina displays, for example, on Macs and stuff like that. So displays have been really nice, and you can find a really good display for not that big of a price anymore. 
We're now going down into other things, for example, processors. Processors are the meat of the computer. These are the heart, and this is what will give it that oomph in it. All right, so processors, they vary. Now, if you go to a regular um, Best Buy or something like that, and you find a $300 computer, and you see that it's running like Intel Pentium from like 2006, and you use it, and you think it's pretty fast, it's most likely not gonna be fast after a week or a month of usage. What you see in Best Buy or on those computer shelves on that have um, the PC already set up is you're seeing a computer that has nothing added to it. It's factory stored and it has no software, nothing in it. So what you're seeing is a computer that has no software on it, no programs in it. It's running smooth because there's nothing on it. Once you start adding things to it, it's not going to be fast anymore. It's going to slow down dramatically because the processor can't handle it. So some really good processors to keep in mind while you're shopping. Um, Intel Core i3s, i5s, and i7s. Those are really fast ones, especially i7. i7s are killer. All right? If you can find a good machine that's in within your budget that has an i7, get it. It's, it's fast. All right? and we also have AMD processors, and some good ones to look out for are like the A series or the FX series, um, such as A8s, A10s. A10s, I mean, not 810s, and um, the FX series, those are really good processors. But I'm not an expert in AMD processors, so just look up some reviews on it, see what other people think of it, and you make your deciding factor on that. Now, with it, processors come cores. Now, when you're um, shopping, you're going to come up upon words like quad core, or dual core, or octa core in some cases. Now, what these mean are just think of a processor as a brain. These different cores are like brains. Now, the more brains you have, the faster and the more processing it's going to be able to take in, and the faster it's going to be able to do um, tasks. So, a dual core is it was good before a couple years ago now it's kind of been outdated because there are more heavy quad core processors right now quad core is what you want to look for now in these times you can get quad core for not that much of a um not not a big price tag now if you want a big um processor you can go for octa cores uh, there's a bunch of them you can go for six cores this is also good but they're going to cost you more money now when you want the six cores and eight cores you're heading into a thousands direction so if your budget's less than a thousand you're going to want to stick to quad core or even dual core in some cases but in general the more cores you have the better um, your computer is going to perform now when we're going down next with RAM for specifications now for RAM the more RAM you have the more it's going to perform just like processors the more cores you have the better it's going to perform but for RAM you want to stick to consumer level unless you're doing video editing if you're doing some really heavy tasks Photoshop, Premiere, um, Final Cut Pro for Max then you want to upgrade that RAM to an even higher one a standard one for regular users is about 4 gigs of RAM that's a good baseline that's a good way just to get started with a computer and it's going to be fast and it's going to be good now if you need to do photo editing on that it's not going to be as helpful it's going to slow down a little bit you want to do multiple things at the same time um, a good one for um, some um, beginner video editors or intermediate video editors is 16 some PCs can go up to 32 and 64 on Macs also so you decide the level of intensity that you're gonna push this computer to if you're gonna push it really to its maximum go for 32 64 if you're gonna go for intermediate medium level processors you want to go for 16 or 8 and if you're just a consumer just go for 4 um, gigabytes of um, RAM basic use you'll get you'll still get a lot of out of it right now the next one is hard drive hard drives are pretty what's going to most prominently decide how fast your computer is going to go now you also have processors to determine that but um i think ssds and H hdds are the prominent factors in your speed now an hdd is a hard is a regular hard drive that has spinning discs in it so if that fit so there's um rotating distance so there's moving parts in it it's more prominent to fail because there are moving discs in there well an ssd has no me moving disc it's flash memory and so it's um has more durable so the thing with hdds and ssds is that there's a big speed difference between them hdds they are slow now I know a lot of you are looking through the um, computers that you're um, you want to buy, and you see that they have an HDD. HDD is fine. It's 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 fast. It's not super fast. It's not slow. It's just fast. It's just good. It's good for regular people. SSDs are killer beasts. Now these things will take so much, and to do it in seconds. Like for example, I have an SSD on my Mac. 
Nah, this is such a killer SSD. I get like I can like um put a gigabyte file onto my desktop in about five seconds. If I had an HDD like my um PC desktop I have right in front of me, that might take a minute or two minutes or uh, a little bit even more than that, based on how big the file is and stuff like that. HD HDDs will also determine the boot um how long it takes on how long it takes to turn on your computer as well. Um, HDDs will maybe take a minute or two minutes. SSDs from my computer takes about 15 seconds, so it's a big difference. So deciding factor is um hard drive. There's also with HDDs and SSDs the price and how much storage you want. If you want big storage and you're under a budget, you can get maybe a terabyte for maybe 150 bucks or 200 bucks for HDDs, a terabyte. Now that's about a thousand gigabytes. Now, if you're looking for a terabyte for SSD, you're thinking about maybe a couple thousand dollars for that compared to like the 150. So if you're thinking about big storage, go for HDD. If you're thinking about maybe a small storage, 250, 128, even 500, um, then you might want to go to SSDs, all based on your budget, all based on how much you can afford for this computer. Now Intel has been coming out with these Haswell processors. Alright, and these Haswell processors, they have tremendous battery life. They have such low power saving um, tech, um, energy in them. The Haswell chips in general save you a lot of power and save you a lot of battery. Now it doesn't cut down on the power. Haswell chips are really strong chips. They're at the top of the line, whether you get i3, i5, or 7, they are still super fast, but they're um, energy efficient. So these last you for a long time. A lot of Haswell um, computers right now that are being integrated have tremendous battery life. They have about 10 hours, 11 hours of battery life. So with these Haswell chips, you're going to get really good battery life out of them. For example, my MacBook Air and um, the MacBook Pros that recently got released. Uh, my MacBook Air gets about 14 hours of battery life and it's running. It's a 2013 variant, so it's going to have that Haswell chip and it runs for about 14 hours. And I personally saw in 14 hours go by on my MacBook and it took that. It took it real good and it, it kept the power so high that... I never saw any slowness of it. I never saw any lag of the power. It was just kept pulling at full speed and it lasted for 14 hours. And I was like, wow. I was in astonishment that they could last that long under that much power. And I do like a bunch of editing on my videos. And I do a lot of video editing because my YouTube channel. And, and so it lasted. And I'm really happy that I have a Haswell chip in my computer. So that's, not, that's one thing to look at when you're um, buying a computer and you're trying to decide what chip to get. If, you ha if it has a Haswell chip, then that's a really definitely good thumbs up for you to get it. Now let's also talk about price. Mac, Macs and PCs have um, different prices in them. Now you can have a different type of Mac. You can have a Mac, um, Mac Mini or you can have a MacBook Pro, a MacBook Air, and a Mac Pro. Now Mac Minis are the are the most inexpensive computer that they have other than the iPad but I'm not talking about talking about tablets right now I'm just talking about regular desktops and laptops Mac minis are the smallest and because they're really mini and then um they're the most cost inefficient now these don't always have the best processors um, things in them but you can always upgrade them for the more the price so these can go around one thousand dollars if you're gonna get the right processors and get the good process off them but I think their starting points are around six hundred seven hundred dollars I believe I haven't really checked it because I haven't never really been interested in a Mac mini because I believe that you can just get a laptop for that same price and you'll get portability and speed all at the same time so that's a choice for you you can look into the Mac mini and see if that's if that's what you want now for PCs you have a variety of PCs now Windows um, has been went all over the place and a bunch of manufacturers um, have Windows OS on their computers and this allows for different price varieties when um, Windows PCs can range from 200 bucks to a couple thousand bucks depending on the specs on them the ones at 200 bucks will be trashy quality they will have maybe about a gigabyte of ram two gigabytes of ram maybe 100 hd 100 gigabytes of hdd and then a slow processor that's from 2002 probably so it's not going to be a really fast computer and now you also have those ultra books where you have those really powerful gaming desktop machines that are like i7 maybe a, th a terabyte of SSDs and like 62 gigabyte of RAM 